Hello everyone, Matt here and welcome to Simply Strength. Today's video is the start of another series I'm compiling entitled Masters of MGTOW, where I discuss individuals, both real and fictional, who espouse aspects of my interpretation of MGTOW, or men going their own way. As with all my videos, I hope you enjoy it and find my thoughts useful. I'm keen to get your feedback on whether I should continue with it and really take this series forward. Recently I watched the film Boys in the Hood for about the 20th time, and I always find myself inspired by Lawrence Fishburne's portrayal of Jason Furious Styles. Given that the film is about a group of friends that grow up in South Central Los Angeles, a very tough neighbourhood where a trip to the store can get you shot, you would think that a person such as myself can never relate to being a child in that environment. Indeed, the film was intended in many ways to draw wider attention to what was going on in South Central in the early 90s, and it was very successful at doing so in my opinion. It truly is a great film about brotherhood and friendship, in the midst of the struggles posed purely by living in that area. I've spoken before about having surrogate father figures from fictional sources and via the internet. Check out my parenting as a scholarly pursuit video. And Furious certainly does provide a sterling example of a positive father figure. He also espouses many aspects of MGTOW throughout the film in my opinion, and I'm going to highlight these later on. There will be spoilers in this video, so please if you haven't seen the film, go ahead and watch it as soon as possible before returning. Furious Styles is introduced early on as the divorced 27-year-old father of 10-year-old Trey, later portrayed by Cuba Gooding Jr. Trey is initially living with his mother in Inglewood, California, however due to a number of fights at school he has moved to live with his father in Crenshaw. Reva, his mother, justifies this by telling Furious that Trey needs to learn how to be a man, and that only he can provide this education. From the outset, Furious takes a tougher approach with Trey, making him sweep the front lawn and collect the leaves until dusk. When Trey questions what his father has to do around the place, he's firm in his response, saying all I have to do is pay the bills, put food on the table and clothes on your back. And Trey thinks that Furious is being hard on him, but in actuality he's teaching him how to be responsible and be mature. This is particularly relevant given that Trey's best friends, maternal half-brothers Ricky and Doughboy, live across the street with their single mother Brenda. Ricky has a passion for American football and is generally well-intentioned if a bit naive. Doughboy, however, is more pragmatic and street smart, willing to stand up for himself against a local Crips gang member that steals Ricky's football. It appears that Furious is the only father in the neighbourhood and begins to impart valuable wisdom about life and parenting to his son. On a fishing trip, he implores Trey not to join the army having served in Vietnam as a youth himself and asserts that any man with a dick can make a baby but only a real man can raise his children. He explains that he used to hang around with troublemakers and thieves and so on, and could have been dragged into crime, but he decided to be responsible given that he had a baby on the way. Perhaps illustrating the value of this conversation, when they both return to the neighbourhood, Doughboy and his friend Chris are taken away for shoplifting and end up in juvenile hall. The vastly disparate paths that the boys take on their journey of development illustrates the value of a strong father figure or mentor, and real-world examples of this can be found to no end such as Mike Tyson, for example. Seven years later, a party is held for Doughboy on his return from prison. He's now gotten big, as Trey puts it, due to eating and lifting weights all day in prison, given the lack of much else to do. Ricky is now a star running back for his school, has a toddler son with his girlfriend, which would have been ill-advised if he'd had any male guidance on the matter, especially given his promise as an athlete. By contrast, Trey is a moral, upstanding young man, working at a clothes store whilst performing well at school. Upon returning home, Trey gets a haircut from his father whilst lying about losing his virginity. Pressing him, Furious asks if he rubbered up, given that he was 17 himself when he became a father. This is powerful advice and demonstrates ownership of his actions, whilst enabling his son to profit from this experience and knowledge. The movie is punctuated by pearls of wisdom from Furious such as this. Indeed, throughout the film, Furious is never shown with a woman except with his ex-wife, when Reva tries to take her son back in a fashion and this exchange is amusing, as Furious attempts to stamp his authority. Elsewhere, he's often shown reading, demonstrating an interest in sociology, racial and class struggle, and he also appears scholarly, using bowding balls to develop dexterity and strength in his hands. One particular scene where Furious, uh, Ricky and Trey go downtown to where Furious works, uh, is his job providing financial advice Indeed, it appears that Furious has some renown in the community as an erudite and knowledgeable man. And Trey alludes to the fact that Furious reads a lot, 
further supported by Doughboy, who compares him to Malcolm Farrakhan. The relationship between Trey and Furious is tested when Ricky is killed by the local gangsters and Furious demonstrates real resolve standing in front of Trey and imploring him to to shoot him as Trey has gone and got his revolver and is going to go and try and get revenge for his friend's death but Furious is adamant that he's going to stop the cycle of violence realising that it could really affect obviously Trey's life if he's to go out and carry this through Lawrence Fishburne has alluded to the tremendous impact that his character has had on fatherless children. And I remember watching an interview from the extras on the Blu-ray that he's been told by one particular man that his character was the father he never had. To hear such words and praise about your portrayal of a character must be truly heartwarming and worth more, in my opinion, than any Oscar recognition. The lessons his character imparts during the film apply not just to people in that particular neighbourhood and time. They can be extrapolated to our own lives as well. There's meaning to be had for everyone. To me, Furious is a MGTOW because he lives alone, reads an awful lot, puts a lot of time into his pursuits and knowledge, doesn't seem to date throughout the film, doesn't remarry, almost learns his lesson, I guess, puts his time into his work and study, and becomes more aware of social, political issues, and also invests a lot of time and thought and effort into raising his son. I've included a link below with a compilation of Furious Star's quotes, but I would strongly urge you to watch the film in its entirety to provide the correct context for these scenes. I hope you enjoyed this video and found some of my points informative. If you think this series is something that has potential, I'd be glad to hear your thoughts. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you and take care.